Don Snyder was born to farmers in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Uh, my mom uh, and dad had uh, two boys, and they decided to try one more time to get a girl, and they got me and my twin brother, so they decided that was probably enough. By the time the twins were five, their father had left the farming business and moved to selling tires in Rapid City and then to Wyoming. And uh, from the time I was 12 years old, I worked, uh, I worked in my dad's tire shop changing tires. I, and I did that uh, all the way while growing up, but also uh, when I was in college, my summer job was working construction jobs, changing tires, earth mover, earth mover tires. His college was the University of Wyoming, where he studied business administration. Don knew early on that banking was his calling. I had offers from two banks in California, which really sounded good. I had no friends or family in California, but, uh, but to, uh, to be able to uh, go to some place that was warmer, uh, having grown up in the, in the cold part of the country, uh, appealed to me. So, uh, so I accepted a job uh, with one of the banks uh, right out of college and uh, move, uh, moved to California with all my worldly possessions and my 1965 Mustang. So in 1969, Don Snyder began the trek to California to begin management training with United California Bank, which later became first Interstate and then Wells Fargo. On the way to California, Don stopped in Las Vegas, stayed overnight at the Circus Circus, and talked to a bartender who told him about Orange County. So Don settled in Orange County, started working in a bank branch nearby, where he met his future wife. So there's a bartender someplace in Las Vegas that has something to do with the fact that Dee and I have been married and we've been married now for over 39 years. She was a teller, uh, uh, operated a proof machine. You probably don't know what a proof machine is, but that's part of the uh, 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 bookkeeping uh, system for a bank in those days it was. So uh, she worked <coughs> for the bank and we were at a Christmas party uh, one, uh, uh, one night. Uh, the first uh, first uh, month or two that I was there, and, I'm, and I gave her a ride home uh, from the Christmas party, and we started to date thereafter. After a couple of years of dating, the two married, and Don rose quickly through the ranks at the bank, gaining experience in international banking with a three-year stint in Taiwan, and then back home as head of banking for Latin America. Then, in 1987, came the opportunity to move to Nevada as the president and CEO of First Interstate Bank, the largest commercial bank in the state at the time. Don initially saw Nevada as just a temporary home, but quickly saw something else. Coming in as the CEO of the largest bank in the state really gave me an opportunity to get involved in a lot of different things. And I saw, I, 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 I was really very much turned on by that because I could, I could see in a state like this you could have impact. In California, uh, as, as one person, it's very difficult uh, to see yourself really impacting things one way or another. Here in Nevada, I saw something very, very different. And I saw that early on, uh, and I'll tell you, now that we've been here for 23 years, uh, I see it in spades. I mean, it's just, uh, this, this is a state that uh, welcomes people from the outside. Uh, which is uh, which is good and it encourages people and provides the opportunity for people to get involved. Ted Quirk first met Don Snyder in the late 1980s when Quirk was building Spanish Trail and had a 50 million dollar loan with First Interstate Bank. And the first meeting with Don uh, didn't go very well to tell you the truth. <laughs> he, he called a meeting, this was during the savings and loan crisis, called us all down to uh, and that was the first time I met him and his uh, his words were, uh, I'm calling your loans. And uh, we all looked at each other and said, it's impossible. Yeah. We worked it out eventually. <laughs> but it was, that at time? the time, I thought, my, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Over time, the two got to know each other and became great friends, Quirk calling Don a true leader. But Quirk says under that calm and cool demeanor lies a very competitive guy. To see it, you only need to play golf with Don. He loves to hit the ball farther than anybody else. Uh, he's got a needle as long as his ball retriever and he'll bite your head off for 18 holes. When he left banking in 1991, one of Don's first projects was to meet with the downtown casino owners to come up with a plan to bring in more customers and compete with the strip properties. It was a really interesting opportunity uh, to work with some of the, uh, the real legends uh, in, in the industry. I mean, Steve Wynn and Bill Boyd, Jack Binion, Jackie Gaughan, one of the great women of, of gaming history, Jeannie Hood. 
uh, Mel Ex Exper. Uh, so it was really an incredible collection of, of people that uh, not only had tremendous history in the gaming business, but uh, were real characters. And so to be able to work with them, I mean, I've, I've said many times that one of the biggest challenges was to sit around the table with this, this group of people, all of whom had appropriately uh, their, their strong uh, sense of themselves and egos to a considerable extent. Uh, we're used to competing with one another, uh, but uh, now we're working to, uh, to collaborate on something. Uh, it was a, a really interesting process. That process became the Fremont Street Experience. After the success of that plan, Don got a call from friend Bill Boyd. The two joined forces to bring Don back to his first love, banking. They opened Bank West of Nevada, which now operates as Bank of Nevada. And Boyd invited Don to join the board of Boyd Gaming and then the management team and later president of Boyd Gaming, retiring in 2005. But Don didn't retire to lie on the beach or play golf all day. He wanted time to do the things he really wanted to do. And the things that uh, I wanted to do were, first of all, to do more corporate board work because I've always enjoyed that. Don also had other interests, like heading up UNLV's first ever multi-year $500 million capital campaign, which was successful and made more than the $500 million target. His friend Summer Hollingsworth says no one would have expected any less from Don Snyder. He is probably the best consensus builder I've ever seen in my life. He's a leader and then he follows through. He gets the job done. When Governor Sandoval said the other day, if Nevada was a stock, I'd buy it. If Don Snyder was a stock, I'd buy it. Because you're not going to lose. Similar words from longtime friend Erwin Malaski, who had asked Don Snyder to help with the Nathan Adelson Hospice. He's, he's one of the smartest individuals I've ever met in my life. He's a very, very unique person. Uh, he has the ability to get to the crux of a problem and solve it and follow through. And. Uh, He's extremely intelligent, if I haven't said that before, and he's also very caring and very nice. I admire him and respect him. One of Don Snyder's biggest dreams for Southern Nevada is now becoming reality, the Smith Center for the Performing Arts in downtown Las Vegas. He was the driving force in getting the funding for the Smith Center and believes it will eventually be his legacy. These projects are projects uh, for generations. Uh, and. And so to be involved with something that is going to change a community for generations is something that I'm very, very proud to be part of. Now Don Snyder is in his office as the interim dean at UNLV's William F. Hara College of Hotel Administration. So I've really enjoyed the learning curve. I've also uh, been challenged by uh, looking at how business works and how academia works and the decision making process, how that works and the speed at which it takes. And so my goal is over time to try to get those worlds to come a little bit more closely together. His friends and colleagues have no doubt that Don will be successful at this endeavor as well. At some point you will see major changes in that, in that college uh, of uh, hotel management. You'll see major changes happen there. You'll see things that you never imagined. It, I, think it's, I think it really is the best in the world today. I think it's better than Cornell. But I think that when he gets through it, that there's going to be things happening there that everybody is going to say, there's no place I'm going to go to hire my, to hire my employees unless they graduate from UNLV. It's going to be one of those deals. When I hear about Don, I mean, here's a guy I knew when he was uh, a president of the bank. Uh, he was involved with the Fremont Street Experience. When I was elected the mayor, he headed up the UNLV Foundation. Uh, Smith Center for Performing Arts wouldn't even be a, a twinkle in somebody's eye without him having been behind it. Uh, the interim dean at UNLV for the, uh, the hotel school, it, it, it's unbelievable that here's a guy who can't keep a job and he's going into the Business Hall of Fame. And Don can barely believe it himself. To sit here today uh, and to be an inductee into this Hall of Fame after having had those thoughts about the people that were uh, initially inducted in and then watching the people over the years, it's an incredible honor. I mean, it's, it's something that, again, exceeds uh, my, uh, my highest expectations for what I, would, I, what I could accomplish. And so it's a real honor. It's an honor for me. It's an honor for my family. And I'm very, very pleased.